One more moment, everyone. Reporter, we will begin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners and staff, and welcome to the City of Patterson Board of Adjustment meeting of Thursday, January 21st, 2021, at 7 30 p.m. via webinar session, virtual meeting. Please stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Chairman Thaxton, may I continue with the agenda, sir? Sure. Notice pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act addressing the effect of coronavirus measures on the next public meeting, Executive Order Number I'm sorry, excuse me. Addressing the effect of coronavirus measures on the next public meeting, consistent with the coronavirus-related restrictions of the Executive Order Number 107 given on Saturday, March 21st, 2020, by Governor Philip D. Murphy, the Board of Adjustment of the City of Patterson will not conduct in-person participation of the public at all future meetings until further notice. However, public participation will be available by means of communication equipment pursuant to NJSA 104-8, commencing on Wednesday, April 23rd, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Though there may be potentially be a practical need for a limited number of administrative, technical, or other city personnel to be present in or near the council chambers, third floor, City Hall, 155 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey, in-person participation of the public is prohibited. Nevertheless, for reasons of compliance with the said Executive Order Number 107, public participation will be available by calling one 9 321-1579. Meeting ID number 711-680-001. Again, the number is 973-321-1579. Meeting ID number 711-680-001. Board of Adjustment Special Meeting of Thursday, January 21st, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. I'll to take give me one moment, please. Excuse me. On the date and time that the meeting is scheduled to commence, the public may also participate in the meeting by accessing the website of the City of Patterson, www.pattersonnj.gov, and following the email link for the meeting, www.pattersonnj.gov slash Board of Adjustment. The following matter will be heard. DTF Holdings LLC carry from November 12, 2020 meeting. 182-188 East 33rd Street, Block 8504-5. This is an application to construct a five-story, 32-unit apartment building on a vacant 10,937.50 square foot lot. The first floor will contain 32 covered parking spaces. The second through fifth floors will contain a four one-bedroom apartment and four two-bedroom apartments per floor for a total of 32 apartments. The applicant is providing 32 parking spaces of the 61 spaces that are required. This is for use both D variances, site plan, and H1 zone. Is the applicant present? Mr. Sarlo? Mr. Sarno, is are you uh, 
Transit Surge, represent the applicant. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. The applicant is present. Maggie, for the record, it's Gary Paparossi. For the record, the, the applicant is now supplying 30 parking spaces, not 32. Thank you for that change. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Morocco, do you accept that change? Although I put 32 in the ad. Uh, you put 32 in the ad? And how many are there now, Gary? 30. Uh, there are not 30. Uh, uh, there was an easement in the back. Uh, I, I, I was going to... Uh, I addressed that to uh, Mr. Evans, and he saw the easement, and he addressed it uh, accordingly. I was going to go over that with Mr. Sarlo during testimony, but uh, they had some cars parked on the easement. It looks like some sort of ingress egress easement, or a right-of-way easement, and uh, obviously... I, I, think for purposes of, I think for purposes of notice, we're, we're fine. I mean, it's... Not that substantial of a, of a deviation that creates any issues. Thank you, thank you for that. So we can proceed. Chairman Jackson, this is your agenda, commissioners and staff. You may continue. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, good evening, Mr. Ch uh, Chairman, com commissioners, Councilor, Mr. Paparossi, uh, Madam Secretary, Charles Sorrell, on behalf of the applicant, uh, DTF Holdings, LLC, as Madam uh, Secretary had indicated, this is for Block 8504, Lot 5, uh, property at uh, 182, 33rd Street, Patterson, New Jersey. Um, this is a infill, proposed infill development uh, for a vacant lot, uh, which is in the hospital zone, a H1 zone. And as Madam Secretary had indicated in her introduction, uh, it is proposed for 32 multifamily units, uh, ground floor parking with four stories above. Um, there are a number of, uh, uh, we do need a use variance, obviously, for the proposed multifamily in the H1 zone. Uh, we need a density variance um, and a number of bulk variances, as well as uh, preliminary and final site plan approval, as well as the parking variance. I'm not going to go through all the bulk variances that are needed because I, I do have two professionals uh, to address all of the, the variances. With regard to uh, the brief discussion before I made my appearance on the parking, and we certainly appreciate uh, Mr. Paparossi uh, indicating that in uh, the report. Um, and Mr. Evans, the architect, uh, did, uh, in preparation for this evening, did quickly change the plans to uh, remove uh, two parking spaces. As Mr. Paparossi pointed out, the survey that was submitted uh, with the, with the uh, application does indicate a um, uh, at the rear of the property going along the width of the property, so not coming out to the street, uh, but going the width of the property, um, does indicate, uh, it's, it shows a recorded book and page, um, and does indicate a right of way. Um, so Mr. Evans revised his drawings to remove the parking on that right of way easement, which reduced it from 32 spaces down to 30 spaces. Uh, however, uh, in the last 24 hours, and we're going to have uh, Mr. Evans testify to this, he was able to pull that deed um, that has the easement uh, that's the beneficiary of this right-of-way easement. It happens to be um, the, the property behind this property, uh, who is a client of Mr. Evans also, and is, uh, is um, going to propose multifamily also, and um, I think Mr. Evans will be able to make a representation that the uh, client, uh, his client for this adjoining property owner that is the beneficiary of this easement, uh, is willing to vacate uh, this easement, extinguish. Actually, the legal term is extinguish the easement. Uh, and we would, uh, based on the representation that you'll hear from Mr. Evans, if the board is to look favorably on this application, uh, we would... Uh, uh, be willing to accept a condition to have that easement extinguished. The point Mr. Of Sorrell, that, before you continue with your testimony, I understand you're expressing what you need to, but I need to have a roll call of all commissioners. Well, uh, may, may I hold up? Mr. Mack, hold on. I was going to interrupt. Let him finish his opening since he's already far through. Okay, thank you. Okay. I, I apologize, Madam Secretary. I kind of jumped the gun there. Um, and thank you, Councilor. So, yeah, so we're very uh, quick to finish. I apologize again for going out of order. Um, so the, the net effect of all that, what I was just explaining, is uh, basically uh, even though uh, Mr. Evans submitted 
a revised plan to Mr. Paparossi for the uh, two reduced parking spaces. We believe we could um, uh, pick up those two parking spaces, and the application that you'll hear tonight is as it was actually submitted with the 32 parking spaces. Again, I apologize for going out of order. Madam Secretary, so <laughs> and Councillor, thank you for uh, letting me finish. <laughs> Am I ready to pull the roll, sir? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Furman, are you present, sir? Commissioner Furman? Present. Commissioner Hodges? Present. Commissioner Levine? Absent. Commissioner Minoto? I'm here, Maggie. Oh, you're here? Well, welcome. Commissioner Minato? Present. Commissioner Rohim? Present. Commissioner Watkins? Present. Commissioner Arenas? Present. Vice Chairwoman Dumas? Present. And Chairman Dex? Thank you. We have nine commissioners present this evening. Chairman Dex? Uh, uh, Mr. Solo, Gary Paparossi, uh, on that evening, uh, one, I would need to see that deed because uh, uh, the survey uh, looks like it is paved and it goes to the property to the south. So I'm not sure if it's only for one u one user or maybe the property from the south uh, uh, has it uh, one way in and one way out and it's through that easement. It could be possible. That's what it looks like on the survey. So one, I would need to review that easement you can always uh, make it subject to, but uh, right now I, I, I think uh, without having to hold off the application, we we, uh, uh, we we go with the thirty, and if the two can be added, that's that's fine. But again, that that is something that one I need to review. It, it, it looks like uh, uh, it's more than just one person using it, and, I, and Mr. Evans made think that he is the beneficiary of the easement, the one gentleman, but it could be more than one. It, mm -hmm. That's how it looks on the survey, but uh, again, I would have to review it. I'm understood, Mr. Paparazzi. And, and Mr. Evans could, be, could post it, but we don't want you to necessarily have to read it on the spot and make an interpretation on the spot either, but he could post it on the screen just for the benefit of the commissioners. But we will submit it to you in hard copy. Okay, uh, yeah, he can email it to me, uh, uh, and I can go over it that way as this is quick. Thank you. May I also have a copy for our files, Mr. Paparazzi? Yeah, Mr. Solo heard you. He'll email it to, uh, or Mr. Evans will email it to, to everyone who has to get it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I continue, or do you have some procedural questions? Go Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, commissioners, I apologize for um, going out of order, uh, but I did give you my opening. I do not want to necessarily repeat my opening. So uh, with that said, if there's no procedural questions, I'd like to call my first witness, uh, Mr. Matt Evans of Evans Architecture. Um, I do have, like I said, I do have uh, two witnesses, Mr. Matt Evans, and then also Mr. George Wheaton Williams, who will be testifying as a professional planner. Uh, Mr. Williams, can you raise the, I'm sorry, Mr. Evans, can you raise the right hand and be sworn in? You're muted, uh, and Linda, you're muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> you saw our current testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. State your full name for the record. Matthew Evans, Architect Planner, 470 Chamberlain Ave, Patterson, New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Um, I know you've been qualified as an expert in uh, the field of architecture by this uh, board in the past. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you want to put his credentials on the record again, or will you accept it? We will accept it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Evans. Uh, so you qualified as an expert in the field of architecture. Um, you have submitted as part of the application drawings S1, S2, SE1, A1, and A2 with a 
the last revision date of March 4th, 2019, is that correct? Uh, that was the uh, last submission, and then I made an amendment um, uh, to take out the uh, parking based on the easement. I sent it uh, electronically. Okay. Uh, and these posted to. Okay. And these drawings were prepared by yourself or under your direction? Yes. Okay. So please, uh, for the commissioners, uh, start your testimony with your starting with uh, existing conditions of the site and then go into the proposed development. <clears throat> okay. Um, we're posting um, the latest plan. Um, as mentioned, it's the. Um, March 9th, uh, 4th, 9th, 2019, with uh, a, a couple amendments for the planner's letter. Um, so, going through that. Um, the, date, uh, the date, Mr. Evans, just for the record. Uh, the, my date is 11921, with the, that's what we spoke about removing the parking spaces. I'll get into that a little differently uh, in, in a little bit. Um, so we have the cover sheet, which is, shows the tax map, the um, zoning map. We have the zoning table, uh, an existing street view of the site. And then we have the uh, proposed utility plan, lighting plan, and site plan of the um, proposed development. We show that, um, and along with the zoning table, I'll just go run through the pages real quick. Then we have <clears throat> sheet S2 shows the site details, standard details for construction uh, of the site. And then we have um, sheet A1 shows the ground floor plan and the upper floor plans, which is the two through five, <clears throat> which would be the same. We have a 50-50 mix of one bedroom and two bedroom units. Um, which both uh, exceed the minimum of 600 and 900 square feet for the uh, unit count. We show the elevations on sheet A2 uh, with the right side, left side, uh, rear, and the front elevation on 33rd Street. Um, and that would be, in essence, the bulk of the, um, of the submission that we've uh, sent. Uh, <clears throat> so what we're proposing, the, the property right now is a vacant lot. It used to be, uh, many years ago, it was a motel uh, that connected over to the, uh, I believe, Lot 3 uh, and Lot 5 were connected years ago, and it was a L-shaped property that connected uh, between Broadway and um, East 33rd, and it had motels. Um, and. Uh, structures on it. They're both vacant lots uh, and they're both now under separate ownership. Um, what we're proposing right now is the property lot 5, block 8504 and um, we would be developing that to be uh, residential multifamily. It would just be um, parking uh, at grade. Um, we have the the parking shown, uh, we have right now we're showing 30 parking spaces with, um, you know, we had some in the eastern area, but now those were, were removed based on um, um, uh, meeting that criteria of having an easement back there. Uh, but we still have, in essence, the all the underground uh, garage parking, which would be 30 parking spaces. We have um, a rear fire stair, and then we have handicap parking to the front of the uh, entrance. We have a garage door, which is a two-way entrance off uh, 33rd Street. We have a, a apartment lobby, package room, refuse recycling in the rear. We have an elevator and a fire stair on the ground floor um, parking level. That elevator would bring us up to the um, upper floors, which are um, all similar uh, on each floor in nature. Uh, basically, 201 uh, through 208. And that's a, as I mentioned, it's a mix of 50-50 of one and two bedroom units. Um, we've modified the plan. We show laundry 
facilities in each apartment. The apartments, uh, one bedrooms are approximately 700, uh, over 700 square feet, where the minimum is 600 square feet per apartment. And the two bedroom apartments are uh, over 1,000 square feet, where 900 square feet is the minimum. So they all, both um, apartments are generous in size. We have large bedrooms, living room, dining area, and kitchen. They all have handicapped bathrooms, all separate mechanical units, and um, we have a refuse chute for the, um, the tenants on each floor. So that's the, um, basically the floor plan, uh, first and upper floor plans, and then you can see how we have um, I'll zoom in on the front elevation. So this is what we would see from 33rd Street. Uh, it's 182. We have a large um, uh, numerical signage for the building. Uh, in the front, we have a mix of materials. We have double hung windows, brick veneer, uh, stucco finish, uh, five pound freeze moldings at the top, and um, other uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, architectural elements where the building step back and gives you um, a different uh, little curb appeal from the uh, from the street. So the other uh, elevations are more plain in nature because they're on the side and the rear, but predominant um, the front elevation, as I mentioned, would have um, the most uh, aesthetically pleasing facade. Uh, going back to the site plans, we have um, the utility plan shows um, the stormwater um, recharge pits, which would be uh, constructed under the building. There's uh, ample pits to provide for 100% um, retainage of the runoff for the proposed development, um, showing the property and the um, improvements uh, around the uh, perimeter. Uh, we show the lighting plan. We have street uh, lighting along the uh, 33rd Street, which would be um, along the pedestrian way. And then we show uh, just the basic site plan showing the first through fifth uh, floor um, structure. That's a zero lot with a condition on the front on the on partially on the right side, we have 10 feet in the rear property line and 5.1 feet on the left side property line. The building adjacent um, is a zero lot line condition. We would be um, uh, meeting that uh, property line. So um, that's basically the development what we're proposing uh, uh, at this point. And if it's, I guess, any questions? Okay, um, Mr. Evans, thank you. You you testified with regard to uh, the uh, hotel. Yes. Uh, can you um, can you shed some light on how uh, how you know the property had a hotel on it? Well, um, basically, I lived in the neighborhood when I was uh, younger. And I passed by it many, you know, uh, for many years when it was, I guess it was active. I didn't really know. But um, I also have a posting here of, um, I, I have a, some documentation from another surveyor uh, where it was done many years ago. Uh, Bernie Crescenzo, I believe, is a surveyor. Uh, and it shows on the 33rd Street side, it shows uh, a two and a half story hotel. Uh, there was a pool on the property in the rear, uh, and then another stucco building. And then, if you look on the thirty on the Broadway side, there's another building. And it says two and a half story stucco hotel. And uh, there was a, the cabins. Like, there was little cabins uh, many years ago. I think these two buildings were the last that were left at the time the survey was done. But um, that was um, basically a, um, a hotel use prior to uh, what we're proposing. And it was demolished, and then it's been vacant. Okay. 
Okay, so it's um, your understanding that the site had a hotel. It's not only from uh, personal personal knowledge. Is that personal knowledge? Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and this particular survey, how did you come into possession of this particular survey? Um, we got a copy. Um, one of my um, associates uh, reached out to um, Mr. Crescenzo, and he and he and he was able to supply this from field notes from a, on a survey he did, I think, in, the, in, in 84, 88, sometime back uh, many years ago. Okay, so, um, and, you, and obviously you didn't prepare the survey yourself, and you, you, you secured it from another licensed surveyor, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, if permissible, uh, even though Mr. Evans didn't uh, prepare the survey itself, I'd like to have this um, marked as Exhibit A-1. Uh, Mr. Swallow, you know, that is not really a survey. It's on field notes. It's not signed or sealed. And it's field notes that, quite frankly, you could have drawn up. So, uh, I mean, it's up to Mr. Lawaka if you want to uh, introduce that as uh, uh, evidence. But, uh, quite frankly, field notes uh, can be drawn by anybody on this site. And it's not uh, necessarily a licensed surveyor. I think what we can do is take Mr. Evans' testimony that uh, there was a two-and-a-half-story uh, stucco hotel there, but uh, uh, as far as that being called a survey, uh, that would be a, a little bit of a stretch, uh, in my opinion. Mr. Evans, yeah. how, did you, how did you get these notes? I got them from uh, an associate who, uh, you know, when surveyors uh, do surveys, they reach out to other surveyors and see if they have documentation from other, uh, you know, previous surveys or looking at adjacent properties, trying to, you know, close uh, different, you know, doing new surveys and looking for documentation, which is very helpful, um, you know, when doing um, future work and uh, finding I documentation. Assume, I assume, uh, uh, Mr. Morocco, uh, that the... Uh, 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 they were in uh, uh, Mr. Evans, uh, uh, John Evans' uh, files, and, and I guess uh, Matt has uh, uh, access to them now, and they were probably just in his files, unless the files were sold, but I, I would imagine they they probably just put into the files from years ago, uh, helping out another surveyor like Mr. Evans alluded to. But uh, it, quite frankly, it's not a survey. Uh, it, it, it's field notes that, like I just said to Mr. Sargo, you could draw. And uh, it's not it's not signed or sealed, uh, other than the fact it's field notes. But uh, I have no problem uh, accepting Mr. Evans' testimony uh, 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 of his knowledge of the neighborhood. But uh, uh, Mr. Sarlo wanted to introduce it as uh, uh, evidence. I, I don't know what evidence it would be, since it is not a legal document. But that's your call. Um, so if I could just rephrase the right, you know, Mr. Evans referred to it as, as a survey, because um, I guess it's got some dimensions on here, but Mr. Paparossi, you're right, it, it looks more like maybe some field notes. Um, but the intent is to introduce it into evidence is just to show uh, the historical use of the property, uh, the multiple structures, and it being a hotel, obviously, uh, the, the intensity of the historical use of the property. Here's what I think we should do, Mr. Sarlo. I, I think, I understand where you're going. I think to put it in the way you want to put it in kind of is exactly what Gary's saying. He's saying it, the document in and of itself is not proof of that because we don't even know what the document necessarily is, who created it, and so forth. Having said that, if the document uh, coincides with Mr. Evans' recollection, right? What I would suggest is, ask him a few questions. Hey, the, the notes show this, this. I know he, he answered, but let's do that. It, it, I will describe the few things that it reflects as to his recollection. Since we are sharing it on the screen, since we are referencing it, we will mark it as a document that he testified to. It's not going to come in for, for the, I mean, for, I mean, no, we're not in court, but for the truth of the matter of what existed, and it's not truly a document. But we're just going to mark it and make it part of the file. It's not necessarily going to evidence. It's, right. it's, it's, it's a document that's been utilized by you. But just have Mr. Evans talk about what's there. And we're not going to accept that at face value, but it coincides with his memory. 
Right, so rather than introduce the, that's fine, Council. So rather than introducing it or trying to introduce it as um, uh, into evidence uh, as an exhibit, we could just mark it as A1 for, uh, for uh, informational purposes? Yes. Okay. So it is part of your application, you're testifying to it. Right. I think, just, I, think, I think that would be appropriate. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll mark this as A1 for informational purposes. Um, but Mr. Evans, just so we can elaborate, um, as uh, Councilor had, had indicated, what, uh, what, like, you know, what age do you recall uh, this particular development? Do you have a recollection? Did we lose Matt? He's not on video, so I, I don't know if, if, if he, he signed off accidentally. He's not on you, but he's not on video. Oh. Maggie? Oh. Madam Secretary? Yes, I am here. Okay, can you have Matt also email that to me so I can mark it and then send it back to you at one point? Okay, so I would appreciate if... Um, Mr. Um, Paparazzi would explain to me what exactly being marked, what am I receiving, and Mr. Evans can confirm that, and I will send it. Okay, Mr. Evans is back. Uh, uh, Maggie, this is information uh, uh, that will go along with uh, Mr. Evans' testimony. This is uh, this would uh, uh, they will coincide together. The the uh, the uh, field notes drawing and Mr. Evans' testimony are going to testify uh, as to uh, prior use of the law. Okay, so these are field note, you know, drawings. Field only? Field They're field not available. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Just you're going to mark it as field note, just field notes of the site. Of the site. Okay. Thank you, Evelyn. Do you have a number for that? An A1, are we going to mark A1. it? A1. A1. Mr. Uh, Evans, I'd like that in my office tomorrow so that I can have uh, ample time to send it to everyone else, including the court reporter. Thank you so very I, much. I can email it to you. Is, is, uh, is that okay? Yes, you can. All right, great. All right. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Evans, could you see uh, quickly, is what can now marked as Exhibit A1 for informational purposes only, just um, very quick. Do you, do you, do you recall, um, uh, when you were growing up in the area, do you recall these structures um, specifically, or do you, did you just know that it was a hospital? And can, can you let, have, provide any additional testimony to elaborate on the various structures on this particular um, document? Well, yeah, I mean, um, just passing by, I, I, it was a hotel, and um, one of the things, I don't know if anybody else would remember, there was a, a sign on the uh, on the Broadway side which had a, a hotel, it said motel and cabins, uh, it said on it. So um, I've seen it, I think I saw somebody post it on Facebook at one time, but um, it's, it was known as a, as a, a motel site for, for many years. Okay, thank you, Mr. Evans. Um, and Mr. Evans, you talked about the air conditioning uh, units. Can you quickly describe the uh, garbage, how the garbage would be handled? Okay, uh, basically maintenance would uh, handle the refuse and uh, bring it out on, uh, we have a compactor and that would be compacted and brought out to um, the curb uh, by maintenance staff uh, during pickups early morning uh, on the day of pickup. I think that's what kicked me out, but I want to see, uh, see if I can get that. Um, Okay, so we have refuse room, uh, recycling with the compactor, and um, that would be uh, brought out uh, to the curb. Okay, and proposed signage besides the, the um, 
You still have the one sign that you had shown in terms of for identifying the building? Right. That would be the extent of it. Um, I don't believe the um, applicant would, would have any other signage, just the number for the building. Um, at this point, that's all we'd be proposing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions at this point for Mr. Evans. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, Mr. Evans, the, uh, uh, the revision of 119.21, aside from moving the cars in the rear, you, you made that lobby area smaller by uh, eliminating the uh, meter room and the elevator room, which uh, uh, now you have the meters on the outside of the building, uh, which I don't have a problem with. And quite frankly, uh, uh, getting to the, the to the dumpster area is now more efficient. It was before you were, you had it uh, the door right in front of a parking space, and now it's now it's in the uh, handicap uh, access lane, which is which is far better to uh, access. But you did mention uh, you're, going to, you're not going to have a private hall for the for the dumpsters because you mentioned that you're going to take the garbage out to the curb on pickup days. Is that for city garbage, which you are allowed, but uh, uh, or is it for uh, is it for a private hall or with a dumpster? Uh, because uh, uh, if you're doing pickup on the curb, you're going to need like forty cans. More than uh, you know, you're going to need more than forty cans. You know? So uh, obviously that area would be enlarged. So I'm assuming that it's a private hall. Well, I, uh, I guess it would be up to the applicant. He could uh, speak to that um, uh, a little bit later on, on how they want to uh, deal with that. Okay. If, if the applicant uh, does, uh, uh, doesn't want to have a private hauler, you're going to need more room for the, the uh, uh, garbage and recycling because you have, you have four containers there and you have 32, uh, 32 rooms. So. Quite frankly, that is uh, uh, undersized drastically. All right, now, uh, well, I'm going to stay on the, the garbage for a minute. Uh, I, I see that you put the, the, the dumpster duct there. But uh, uh, usually, usually they have a room for, for this dumpster duct, and the only reason why is for recycling. You know, uh, I mean, I'm sure they're not going to they get uh, uh, furniture or something else in big boxes, uh, uh, Christmas tree. <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to put that down that 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 shoot. And uh, what will happen then? It, it'll uh, build up in the hallway and, quite frankly, possibly block the exit to the elevator and to the steps. So uh, I, I certainly would like to see. Uh, Something else. Uh, I'm all in favor of the duct, but uh, uh, there should be some sort of room or uh, uh, provision for the recyclables and, and stuff like that that doesn't fit down that 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 shoe. And uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure that this would work without blocking that uh, that. Uh, entrance to the stairs and the elevator or to that unit 201. So that being said, uh, uh, I think that needs to be readdressed as well. Uh, let me see. Now, uh, uh, I know uh, Mr. Williams is uh, going to cover the uh, uh, all the variances, but uh, uh, I'm just going to go over a few things with you. And one of them is open space. Now, open space requirement for this development is 7,200 square feet. And a lot of times that is not met, but they have uh, uh, amenities inside the building. You have no amenities and no open space. You know, uh, quite frankly, the, the, you know, this area is tight to begin with, and I'm talking about this, uh, this entire neighborhood. Uh, a five-story, 32-unit building, 
I, I, I would think that while you're not providing any open space, I think that uh, 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 some amenity rooms would be uh, would be uh, uh, a plus. You have to remember that you have uh, 700 square foot rooms. So a lot of times, uh, uh, even entertaining in, in, in a central conference room type uh, atmosphere or uh, uh, a TV room or, or something to that effect usually at least offsets some of the uh, open space requirement. I also would have liked to see that as well. And uh, in, in the, uh, the building now itself, uh, Mr. Evans, on uh, sheet S1, uh, can you put that up on the uh, screen? Sure. Oh, man. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Uh, if I'm reading your plans uh, uh, correctly, your building is 75 feet. Is that not correct in, in, in the rear? 75? Is that right? Let me see. Um, hold on. I've got my V buddy in the way here. Um, go to. So we have. At A1. A1, the, uh, the upper plan floor, is that uh, not 75? Hold on. Right there. Right there. Right. You see it? Yeah. 75, right? Am I reading it right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, on the plan next to it, you're showing 5 feet 1 and 5 feet 1. As uh, side offsets. The building, the property is 87 and a half. That doesn't measure 87 and a half. You're, 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 you're a couple feet short. Obviously, uh, 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 you see where you have the building plot again on S1. Right. We you show 5 1 and 5 1 in the rear of the building, right there. Right there. That, 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 you show 5 1, 5 1, and 75. That equals 85 feet. You have 87 and a half. Right. So, so those, those, numbers gonna, those numbers are going to increase, I think. Yeah. So it will be a little bit more of a setback. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, so if the plan is to be a. Uh, 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 if the plan is going to be approved, uh, the, the, those numbers should be 6.25. Okay. Yeah, because that, that, that is what is left after 75 feet. We have 12 and a half feet. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the rest, I guess, is uh, uh, the plan, obviously. Uh, so, the, uh, the, so based on... Um, what our premise was on the open space and um, the the amenities, we, we provided the laundry rooms, as I mentioned, but um, being that the property is basically a, a short walk to Eastside Park, we felt that that was um, an amenity for the property. We have a, a four-minute walk from the site to uh, Eastside, uh, Eastside Park. So there's tennis courts, there's uh, baseball, cricket, uh, open space and um, you know ref refreshment stand a lot of um, uh, those uh, amenities within the park itself so it's uh, it's a benefit yeah, for the neighborhood uh, that is understood but the open space requirement is for the lot that you're occupying and uh, uh, the uh, the park which is a, a, a four minute walk which is whatever two blocks or three blocks uh, they can't use in the winter, they can't use in the rain, they, you know, and a lot of times uh, the residents may just want to read a book or, or you know, and, uh, and just get out of 700 square feet. And uh, that's why the amenities is, is usually uh, important, especially when the density is so high in, this, in the building that you're proposing. The density, and I'm sure Mr. Williams is all ready for that, but the density is almost uh, three times higher than permitted. And uh, uh, the floor area ratio is three times higher than the floor area uh, uh, permitted, uh, which is a, which is a little uh, a little uh, overdoing it, in my opinion. But I'll wait for Mr. Williams on that. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman, for Mr. Evans. If I can answer any questions for the commissioners, I, I am here. Any commissioners? 
I don't know. Uh, I see. Uh, have, have you seen the traffic in that area? <laughs> uh, particularly on 33, 33, uh, uh, 33, 33rd Street. Uh, Commissioner Hodges, Commissioner Hodges, uh, 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 that was that addressed to me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Yes, yes, to you. Because yes, uh, okay. I, I, of course, of course, I did. Well, when I went there to make the inspection, I couldn't park the one car. Okay, uh, when I went for the inspection, there was no place for me to park, and we only took in one car and going to day. Yeah, I, I was just in the area today, and parking is a problem. Um, it, it's a major problem. Plus, 33rd Street is, is a very busy area. You're going to turn on to 33rd Street, which is very close to Broadway, and that, that, that turn is, is, a, is a problem. I mean, coming out in either direction that you go, it's, it's an issue. Frequently, because at the stoplight on Broadway, that's a problem. And you're going to be very far away from Broadway when you come out to enter that interior to exit your, that building. Plus, you, you only have half the parking spaces that you really re are required. So you're gonna, uh, you could uh, potentially dump a lot of extra parking, uh, parking into the area. And there is no parking in that area because of the hospital, <laughs> which, which, is, which is the other issue. Across the street from you, diagonally, is, is another apartment building. And so um, the density that, you, that you're bringing to the area is, is incredible. And, and, and parking is just going to be one of the problems that you have. Well, uh, Commissioner, uh, 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 when I go over the, the, uh, uh, the variances, uh, uh, as you know, I, I always defer the parking to the to the commissioners because you have to remember when I do my inspection, it's during the day, and usually during the day, people are out working, shopping, visiting. Uh, at night, when I'm not there, it is it, it, when the, the problem increases and intensifies. <laughs> and if I can't park during the day, I have to assume that the parking at night is going to be worse. That's right. But, uh, but I, uh, I know how Mr. Uh, Williams is going to handle that, and we're going to have a nice time. Well, I, I live in the area, so this is not something, something that I'm, I'm speculating on. I live around there. And take that way to, you know, to, to cross, uh, to get onto Broadway, to go, to go west or to go east. So it, it's, it's a problem. You also have, you also have the, uh, the, um, the, um, the, the, the mosque. Which, which, which tends to, in, to enhance a parking problem on certain days of the week and for certain hours during those days of the week. So that whole area is, is parking is, is a major issue. And you got the uh, our, one of our schools on, on Temple Street. The, whatever at, at, at the Temple or at, you know, St. Mary's is right, right there as well. So that just complicates things even more when when school's in session. So I'm just putting that on the table for you. Thank you. If I may um, interject here a moment, um, Mr. Evans, there's a screen here in gray that's blocking the plan. Can you remove that? Oh, that's... Thank you. That one? Okay. Yes. And if you can go back to the actual project so the public can see it. Thank you. Okay. I'm done. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Okay, Mr. Wilrocker, could you open it up to the public, please? Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. To the members of the public, if you have any questions with regard to the testimony you just heard, now would not be the time to give any statements or comments, but if you have any specific questions as to the testimony you heard from Mr. Evans, please call 973-321-1579, and when prompted to do so, enter the meeting ID number 
680-680-0001. Once again, without an opportunity at the end for any comments or statements, this is if you have questions, you call 973-321-1579, meeting ID number 711-680-001. Uh, let's give it a couple moments to see if anybody calls. Chairman Jackson and commissioners, you have no callers at this time. You may proceed. Thank you for making that call, please. You don't get another eye makeup. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Do you expect that to myself? Yes, could you, could you call the next one, please? Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was just, you know, sort of a little, little difficult with the virtual uh, virtual meeting. I'm trying to text my client. We're, we obviously take uh, all of the feedback throughout the hearing uh, very seriously, uh, including from the board's uh, professionals, as well as, you know, the commissioners that speak after enduring uh, each witness. Uh, so we did hear some uh, very uh, informative uh, feedback. I'm trying to just text my client. Uh, is it possible to get a five-minute uh, recess that I can maybe call my client and see if we want to put on the next witness at this point in time? Mr. Sarlo, if I may, you can also text me on my cell. I can have um, IT staff connect them onto the actual meeting if you have any difficulty. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Daxon, do you agree to the five-minute break? Chairman Daxon? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sarlo, I can always connect them from here, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
He never called me, so um, I don't know if the applicant is available. It's up to the attorney to decide. Okay, to that's support. I am, uh, Secretary, I'm, I'm back. This is Charles Sorlo. I'm here, sir. Okay. Okay, are, are we still, we're still on the record? Yes, we are. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioners, uh, Madam Secretary, uh, again, as I said before, I requested the uh, five-minute recess, and I certainly appreciate uh, the Commissioners um, uh, giving me the privilege of that uh, recess. Uh, we. You know, we, we always think in any application, especially when you need a use variance and density variance, um, it's very important to listen to the commissioner's concerns as well as the, um, the, the board's professional's concerns. Uh, and we always think that in any application where densities are required, it's kind of a, a give and take process. And at the end of that process, when it's a give and take, um, you know, we hope that the, uh, the board with the commissioners would look favorably on the application. Uh, so with that said, uh, Mr. Paparossi um, did bring out a lot of very good points uh, with regard to um, the difficulty of parking, with Commissioner Hodges kind of seconded that sentiment there. Uh, Mr. Paparossi brought out uh, some very good points with regard to uh, the open space. Uh, so uh, I think at this point in time, we would like to request an adjournment um, and come back and revise the plans uh, and with the potential of removing uh, the top four um, or reducing some of the units and creating open space, but really reworking the plans to address um, the parking. Uh, not to say we're going to be able to meet the parking requirement, but lessen that density, uh, potentially lessen the density, um, and uh, provide some open space. And I know Mr. Paparossi had some uh, concerns here with the garbage. I'll be working that, and I think we'll be able to come back um, with a better plan uh, to present rather than um, to taking up another hour or hour and a half of the commissioner's time. Gary? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no problem with that. I think it's a good suggestion. Although I was looking forward to uh, having that debate with Mr. Williams, my friend, but uh, <laughs> the, 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 this was going to be a bond burger. And I have to, I have to really take my hat off to Mr. Williams. He's got some courage. I have to. <laughs> so, uh, 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 Mr. Chairman, I have no problem with that, and. Uh, uh, Mr. Evans can email me uh, the uh, uh, the plans, and we can streamline it quicker, so that uh, uh, if Madam Secretary can get you on quicker, that would be great, sir. Great. Okay, Madam Secretary, can we have the date, please? Um, Gary, thank you for the well wishes for him to get a, an appointment or a meeting earlier. But this is it. It's June thirteenth, two thousand and twenty-one, at seven thirty p.m. <laughs> Oh, okay, uh, 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 Madam Secretary, if uh, uh, if they finish the plans early and they, they do want to go for a special, Mr. Sarlo will contact you for available dates. Absolutely, he has to send me a notice in writing that it is um, his um, recommendation, and then I will honor him with a special meeting. But the date is June 13, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. I'm oh, sorry, Madam Secretary, June 13th? Yes, sir. That's a Thursday. Um, Regular meeting. I have that as a Sunday. Am I looking at the right calendar? I have it as a Sunday. Hold on. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Excuse me. That's okay. Wait a Hold on. The 10th. The 10th, okay. <laughs> sorry, you're right. I was in May. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, June 10th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Madam, 
I refuse to work on Sunday. <laughs> I know that I'm so sorry. I was looking at May, but my calendar on the other hand says that June is over good. But um, if you wish to have it, that's fine. But if there's any cancellations, I can include you before them if there is a cancellation. Okay, okay well, that's certainly appreciated. So I guess right now we will lock in the June 10th. That's right. Uh, so if, if we could get um, notice preserved on the record for. Uh, June 10th, and if there is a cancellation, I would I would have to re-notice, but uh, I'm sure my client would be fine with that if we could obviously shave off uh, a few months. So for now, you can waive all statutory time requirements? Yes, yes, Madam Secretary. Place it on the record, sir. Okay. Mr. Sullivan? Uh -huh. yeah. Put it on the record that you waive? Uh, yes. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, on behalf of my client, I waive the uh, uh, tolling of time, this extra time period for this uh, board to act on this particular application, uh, given the applicant's request to uh, the, the adjournment and the revision of the plans, as well as the backlog of the board uh, board's agenda. And I would just request that the, uh, the notice, notice be preserved on the record for June 10th, uh, 2021 at 7.30 p.m., so no notice, further notice has to be provided. Okay. Oh, no further notice required. Yes, that's it. Okay. If there's no other business. No, Chairman. Okay. No. okay. Well, this meeting is adjourned, folks. Thank you. Good evening, evening, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Oh.